Lung cancer is one of the most prevalent and deadly types of cancer globally. It occurs when abnormal cells in the lungs grow in an uncontrolled manner, forming a tumor. According to the World Health Organization, WHO, lung cancer is the leading cause of cancer-related deaths globally, accounting for approximately 1.76 million deaths each year. It affects both men and women, with a higher incidence in individuals age 65 and older. The prevalence of lung cancer varies across different regions and is influenced by various factors including smoking rates, occupational exposures, and access to health care. There are two main types of lung cancer, small cell lung cancer, SCLC, and non-small cell lung cancer, NSCLC. These two types of lung cancer are named based on the appearance of the cancer cells under a microscope. Small cell lung cancer is less common than non-small cell lung cancer, accounting for about 10 to 15% of all lung cancer cases. It is more aggressive and tends to spread quickly to other parts of the body. Small cell lung cancer is strongly associated with smoking and tobacco use and is often diagnosed at a more advanced stage. Non-small cell lung cancer, on the other hand, accounts for about 85 to 90% of all lung cancer cases. It is further classified into three subtypes, adenocarcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma, and large cell carcinoma. Adenocarcinoma is the most common subtype of non-small cell lung cancer and usually develops in the outer parts of the lung. It is often found in non-smokers and tends to grow more slowly than small cell lung cancer. Squamous cell carcinoma typically arises in the larger airways of the lung and is strongly linked to smoking. It is less common than adenocarcinoma but is still a significant subtype of non-small cell lung cancer. Large cell carcinoma is the least common subtype of non-small cell lung cancer and is characterized by the presence of large, abnormal cells. It can occur in any part of the lung and tends to grow rapidly. Lung cancer is a complex disease that can have multiple causes. Through extensive research, several factors have been identified as potential causes of lung cancer. The most well-known and significant risk factor is smoking. Cigarette smoking is responsible for the majority of lung cancer cases worldwide. The harmful chemicals found in cigarettes such as nicotine, tar, and various carcinogens damage the cells in the lungs and increase the risk of developing cancer. Another significant cause of lung cancer is exposure to radon gas. Radon is a naturally occurring radioactive gas that is formed from the breakdown of uranium in the soil. When radon is inhaled, it can damage the DNA in lung cells, leading to the development of cancer. Radon can seep into homes and buildings from the ground and accumulate to dangerous levels if not properly ventilated. Exposure to other environmental carcinogens such as asbestos, arsenic, and certain industrial chemicals can also increase the risk of lung cancer. These substances can be found in various workplaces and can be inhaled, causing damage to the tissues in the lungs. In addition to external factors, genetics also play a role in the development of lung cancer. Certain genetic mutations can make individuals more susceptible to the disease. These mutations can be inherited from family members or acquired during a person's lifetime due to environmental exposure. Lung cancer is a serious and potentially life-threatening disease, and it is important to be aware of the common symptoms associated with it. One of the most common symptoms of lung cancer is a persistent cough that doesn't go away or worsens over time. This cough may produce mucus or blood, and it is often a symptom that triggers concern for individuals. Another common symptom is chest pain that may worsen with deep breathing, coughing, or laughing. Shortness of breath is another symptom that can occur in individuals with lung cancer, as tumor growth can impede lung function and make it difficult to breathe. Fatigue and weakness are also common symptoms, as cancer can often cause general feelings of tiredness and reduce overall energy levels. Weight loss and loss of appetite are also potential symptoms of lung cancer, as the disease can affect the metabolism and cause a decrease in the desire to eat. Other less common symptoms may include recurring respiratory infections, hoarseness, wheezing, and swelling in the face or neck. 
It is important to remember that these symptoms can be caused by a variety of factors, and having one or more of these symptoms does not necessarily mean that an individual has lung cancer. Early detection and treatment can significantly improve the prognosis for individuals. The process of diagnosing lung cancer involves various tests and procedures that are performed by a team of healthcare professionals with expertise in oncology. One of the first steps in diagnosing lung cancer is a comprehensive medical history and physical examination. During this initial evaluation, the healthcare provider will ask about the patient's symptoms and risk factors, such as smoking history or exposure to certain chemicals or substances. They will also conduct a physical examination to assess the patient's overall health and look for any signs or symptoms of lung cancer, such as a persistent cough, chest pain, or unexplained weight loss. If lung cancer is suspected based on the initial evaluation, further diagnostic tests will be ordered. These tests may include imaging studies such as chest X-rays, computed tomography, CT scans, or magnetic resonance imaging, MRI scans. These imaging tests can help visualize any abnormalities in the lungs and surrounding tissues. In addition to imaging studies, a biopsy is usually necessary to confirm the diagnosis of lung cancer. A biopsy involves the removal of a small sample of tissue or fluid from the lungs or lymph nodes for examination under a microscope. Several different types of biopsies can be performed, including bronchoscopy, needle biopsy, and surgical biopsy. The specific type of biopsy depends on the location and size of the suspicious area. Once the biopsy confirms the presence of lung cancer, further testing may be conducted to determine the stage and extent of the disease. This may include additional imaging tests, such as positron emission tomography, PET scans or bone scans, to check for the spread of the cancer to other parts of the body. In some cases, molecular testing may also be performed on the tumor tissue to identify specific genetic mutations or alterations that can help guide treatment decisions. This type of testing can help determine if targeted therapies or immunotherapies are appropriate for the patient. Lung cancer can be classified into different stages based on the extent of the disease and the spread of cancer cells. The staging system commonly used for lung cancer is the TNM system, which stands for tumor, node, and metastasis. Stage 0, also known as carcinoma in situ, refers to cancer that is localized to the surface layer of the lungs. At this stage, the cancer cells have not invaded deeper tissues or spread to nearby lymph nodes or distant organs. In stage 1, the tumor is still confined to the lungs and hasn't spread to lymph nodes or other organs. Stage IA refers to smaller tumors that are less than 3 cm in size, while stage IB refers to tumors that are larger than 3 cm but less than 5 cm. At stage 2, the cancer has started to spread to nearby lymph nodes, but it is still confined to the lungs. Stage the QTUA refers to larger tumors that are between 5 cm and 7 cm in size, while stage that QIB refers to tumors that are larger than 7 cm. Stage 3. In this stage, the cancer has spread to lymph nodes located further away from the primary tumor. Stage 3A refers to cancer that has spread to lymph nodes on the same side of the chest as the primary tumor, while stage 3B refers to cancer that has reached lymph nodes on the opposite side of the chest or has invaded nearby structures like the heart or major blood vessels. Stage 4, also known as metastatic lung cancer, refers to cancer that has spread to distant organs like the liver, bones, brain, or other parts of the body. At this stage, the cancer is considered advanced. Lung cancer is a serious and complex disease that requires a multifaceted approach to treatment. There are several different treatment options available, each with its own set of benefits and considerations. We will explain the four primary treatment options for lung cancer, surgery, chemotherapy, radiation therapy, and targeted therapy. Surgical intervention is often the first line of treatment for lung cancer, particularly for early-stage tumors that have not spread beyond the lungs. The goal of surgery is to remove the cancerous tissue from the lungs. Different types of surgical procedures can be performed, including wedge resection, removal of a small portion of the lung, lobectomy, removal of a lobe of the lung, and pneumonectomy, removal of an entire lung. The appropriateness of surgery as a treatment option depends on the size and location of the tumor, 
as well as the overall health of the patient. Chemotherapy involves the use of powerful drugs to destroy cancer cells in the body. It is typically used in cases where the cancer has spread beyond the lungs or when surgery is not a viable option. Chemotherapy can be administered intravenously or orally, and it may be used in combination with other treatments. While chemotherapy can be effective in killing cancer cells, it can also cause side effects, such as nausea, hair loss, and weakened immune function. Radiation therapy utilizes high-energy X-rays or other types of radiation to kill cancer cells. It can be delivered externally, external beam radiation, or internally, brachytherapy. Radiation therapy may be used as the primary treatment for lung cancer, particularly in cases where surgery is not possible. It can also be used after surgery to eliminate any remaining cancer cells. Like chemotherapy, radiation therapy can also cause side effects, including fatigue, skin irritation, and difficulty swallowing. Targeted therapy is a more recent advancement in the treatment of lung cancer. It involves the use of drugs that specifically target the genetic mutations or proteins that are driving the growth of cancer cells. Targeted therapy is most commonly used in cases of non-small cell lung cancer that have specific genetic mutations, such as EGFR or ALK mutations. Unlike chemotherapy, targeted therapy is designed to attack cancer cells while minimizing damage to healthy cells, which can result in fewer side effects. Thanks for watching. To continue receiving valuable content like this, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing to MedBoard.